CSS animations are a cool way to add life to your websites. The word animation comes from the Latin word anima, which means life or soul. When I first learned CSS animations, I thought, wow, so cool. But why so hard to understand? So let me help you learn CSS animations step by step. Okay, so let's jump straight into the code and start learning. Take a look at this simple page I prepared for you with a box on it. First, we will use CSS transitions to smoothly change the box color. To create a transition with CSS, we have to use the transition property. The first value is the CSS property for which we want to create the transition for. In our case, we want to create a transition for the background color. The second value is for the duration of the animation. We want to set it to 3 seconds. And the third value we set to linear because we want to have a linear transition. And last, we have to set the initial background color. Let's set it to tomato. We want the element to change its color to cyan when we hover over it with the mouse. So let's create a hover selector for the color transition class and set the background color to cyan. Now take a look at the browser. As soon as we hover over the box, the color starts changing. That's because our transition is triggered. Let's create a transition for a different CSS property now. Let's say the font size. So we change the first value of the transition property background color to font size and replace the background color property with the font size property. Let's set the initial font size to 20 pixels. And when we hover over the box, we want the font size to change to 40 pixels. So let's take a look at the result in the browser. When we hover the element, the font size transitions to 40 pixels. And if we remove the mouse from the element, it changes back to 20 pixels. Okay, transitions are cool, but let's have a look at real animations next. Let's create a bounce animation. And this is how the final result will look like. To define an animation with CSS, we have to define keyframes. A keyframe is like a snapshot that captures an important moment in your animation. Think of it as a bookmark that marks where something changes, like an object's position or size. And the other frames in between the keyframes are filled automatically by the animation. To define the keyframes for our animation, we have to write add keyframes followed by the name of the animation, in our case bounce in. So to define a keyframe now, we have to write a percentage value, which indicates the position of the keyframe within the animation. So if we define a keyframe at 0%, it means this keyframe is just at the beginning of the animation. At the beginning of our bounce in animation, we want the box to appear very small. So we use a scale transformation to bring the image down to the factor 0.1. Let's define a second keyframe at 60% of the animation and let's scale the box to 1.2. So between the beginning of the animation and 60% of the animation, the image will scale from 0.1 to 1.2. And at 100% of the animation, we want to scale the box to the factor 1. Now there's only one step missing for our animation to work. The box has the class bounce in. So we set animation duration to 2 seconds and the animation name to bounce in. The animation name is the name we have set when we created the keyframes. And finally, we can see our animation in action. Take a look at the browser. The box is bouncing in now. Okay, let's learn a second, more complex animation next. We want the element dangle before falling down. And I have prepared another HTML page containing only an image which we are going to animate. First, we have to define the keyframes again. So we write keyframes followed by the animation name and we want to call the animation dangle fall. Let's define our first keyframe at 0% again and define the animation timing function. We are going to set it to ease in out, which means that the animation is speeding up and slowing down again. Next, we are going to create two keyframes at the same time. We can just write two percentage values separated by a comma to achieve that. At 20 and 60% of the animation, we want to add a 3D rotation. Three dimensional rotations can be created using the rotate 3D transformation. Rotate 3D has four different arguments. The first three defining the X, Y and Z axis values and the fourth value defining the amount of degrees for the rotation. So we want the image rotating along the Z axis by 80 degrees. And at 40 and 80% of the animation, we want to do the same thing and rotate the image along the Z axis, but this time by 60 degrees. Those four rotations creating the dangle effect. But we want the image to fade out as well. So we set the opacity to 1. And our final keyframe, this time we use 2 and not 100%, will get a transformation 
animation as well, but this time we want to translate the image to make it fall down at the end of the animation. So we translate it by 700 pixels along the y-axis. And to make the image fade out at the end of the animation, we set the opacity to zero. And finally, we have to set the duration and the name of the animation to enable it. And the last very important property we have to set is the transform origin property, which sets the point around which a transformation is applied to. In our case, we want the image to rotate around the top left corner. Finally, it's time to see our animation in action. Have a look at the image. At first, it dangles from left to right and then it will fall down. And you can also notice the fade out effect. Okay, we have reached the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it and learned a lot. To support my work, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to not miss any content about learning to code. So have a great day and happy learning.